Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elishar, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Before we get started, if you're listening to this on our any of our streaming platforms or any or watching this on and on YouTube, please give us a five-star rating and a like and also subscription to our YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. We I am so excited today because we have two radio hosts from iHeartMedia's KTU. 103.5. They all, you may also see them on Amazing Race 33, where they took home fifth place. And as of this recording, they have over 71,100 Instagram followers. Please help me welcome Lulu and Lala. Hey, <laughs> you are on point. I, I love, love it. it. Thank <laughs> you for having us. Excited to be right. here. Lulu, Lala, it's a privilege to have you here. And also, I'm one. I'm very excited to share this news. As of yesterday, we just received word that Jake's Take with Jacob Elisha podcast, the audio version, has over 5,000 total downloads. Yeah! Wow. Congratulations! Thank Glad you. to be part of Thank it. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who's downloaded an episode. It's an honor to have you listening. And to, every, um, to all my cat past guests, thank you so much. But this is all about Lulu and Lala. So thank you, ladies, so much for taking time out of your schedules to speak with me today. I feel very honored and privileged. Oh, you're so sweet. Jinx. Uh, no, it's going to be fun. Yes, we are here to answer whatever questions you may throw at us. Okay, so let's start with radio. So when did you guys get interested in radio? And how did that passion evolve into the desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? Well, actually, it's quite funny because we actually started in television and kind of fell into radio. So when we were in college, we took TV and radio broadcasting, but the vision was to be on TV. And so we, we, start, we started interning at Univision um, here in New York City for the local news station. And then when our internship was up, uh, our boss there said, hey, there's this new show coming out that Univision is producing. I think you girls should try it out. We also were doing an internship at TUN, which was the direct competition of MTVU. So we would do a lot of press junkets and, and red carpet interviews there as well. Right. So anyway, with this reality show, we auditioned for it. It was the equivalent of America's Next Top Model, but it was the Latin, Latin version. version. So we were casted for it. We only lasted a week. But then what was interesting is that the company, Univision, there's another show on there called It Gordi La Flaca. It's like saying E! Entertainment that called us so that then we could report, be correspondents for the show that we had been kicked out of. So actually being kicked out of that show was a blessing in disguise because we, that it is there when we started traveling and doing all these, um, you know, TV, TV uh, packages for the t television show. And we really gained a lot of experience. But then when all that was over, the only thing that was left was promotions for Univision Radio, for the right. local station in New York City. So, so we had to start from scratch, meaning the promotions department. And then from the promotions department, we worked our way up to finally being on air. Yeah. And that's pretty much, you know, how, how we, we fell. fell into radio but it's it's been a journey because we've been at the bottom of radio when it's like you know handing out flyers and street corners when, you, when you're getting paid peanuts <laughs> and then we've put in the work and now we have our own show so it's been it's been a few years of, yeah we made the transition we went to cbs radio we did mornings there then we got our own show in miami and then and we came back to new york and now we have the night show on ktu so there's a quick story on how we all how we came about uh in radio and as someone, I got to give you guys props because as someone that graduated from broadcast journalism school, it's very difficult to actually not just make it, but also do work your way up. I salute you because I'm a fellow intern. I also did both the Fox 4 affiliated in Kansas City and also ABC and NBC in Denver. Not the same time, of course, but right. it's a lot. And I respect the heck out of you that you went from bottom to top. So congratulations on your growth. Thank you. So we share a connection right there. You know what it's like, you know, it's not yeah. easy, but if you keep at it and you keep working, then you, you can make it. Eventually there's a payoff. Yeah. And so we were just, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So throughout your career, you encountered a lot of guests. So can you just, who have been the guests that you've spoken with and why do they stand out? I have to say that the one person that really, there's actually two. Um, one of them is Robin Williams. I was fortunate enough to interview him before he passed away. And just the 
the excitement and the aura that he fed, that you fed off of him and he fed off of you is was magical. You know, he was just very spontaneous. He yeah, he was quick with his words. It was something that undescribable. Like he was just always on. And so the fact that I was able to interview him twice. Um, I take that with me. And I think the second one is for me, it was um a uh, Camila Cabello. She's always a sweetheart. Yeah. Um just natural. She doesn't try too hard. She'll answer anything. Um and then also Neo. Neo was like a big ball of fun, very down to earth, super funny, cracking jokes left and right. Uh I those two interviews, those two artists really stand out to me. Fat Joe was actually another uh one of the Better interviews that we had. Such an intelligent man. Very intelligent. Very could, knowledgeable about everything. everything. You could talk to him about plants, about radio, music, cars, just science. Anything. And he just had a conversation for everything. So it was pretty cool. Pretty dope. I'm so glad to hear this and this about all those people. I'm like, that must have been a mate. That's in the memory to get Robin Williams, one of his last interviews. That must be a memory that you guys will hold forever. And not to mention Camilla. I got to say, Bomb Bomb with Ed Sheeran. Holy smokes, what an amazing song. What a right. song. And what a video. She looks absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, we're just so happy to see her, you know, bloom. I remember when she was still with Fifth uh, Harmony. Fifth Harmony. And we, we, that's the great thing I love about being in radio because you see all these artists come in as newbies and then you see them flourish and become these huge pop stars. And you kind of help but feel like, I remember, you know, when they first started and to see them evolve, it's, it's so nice. I totally agree. So speak while we're talking about reality television, let's talk amazing race. So yes. why, did, why did you guys decide that you want to audition for this long, for the long running CBS reality TV show? And what were your reactions as you went through the audition process and kept on going and going and said, oh, by the way, Congratulations, you were one of the teams competing. So yeah. it's funny because for us, we were actually approached um, by some of the producers of The Amazing Race, and they asked us, hey, would you ever participate in this reality show? And, and we, of course, we were like, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's won so many Emmys. And, and it's, so it's, out of all the reality shows that are out there, this one I think is very special because it's kind of like a, a gift. You're traveling the world. You're visiting these countries that perhaps you would never visit right. on a regular basis. Right. And then on top of that, you're doing things that you'd never think you'd do in you're life. You're testing yourself and seeing what are your limits or you're, you're proving to yourself that you can do this. And so the audition process was pretty dope. You know, you're, you're talking in front of producers and you're just literally being yourself. And it is yeah. a little bit nerve wracking because you don't really know what they're looking for. So. Yeah. We were just being this. us. This is how we were. So we we're just trying to be as cool, calm, as collected. What, what you see is what you get, right? Basically. And so when they told us that we had finally made the cut, we were so ecstatic. We, we couldn't believe it. We were going to travel and we were going to meet these new people that were going to come on this journey with us. And possibly win a million dollars. Exactly. Um, so we were excited. Like, yeah. Now, production shut down. and. Well, while you guys were running the race, production shut down due to the COVID, due to the COVID nineteen pandemic. So, what were some of the challenges that you two faced during the during the shutdown, and how did you guys strategize your return to the race once production resumed? Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, um, all of us collectively, I think I speak for the entire cast of season thirty three. None of us really understood the severity of it when we were stuck in Scotland, and we wanted to continue racing. Um, but when we saw that that wasn't going to happen and they brought us all back, um, our lives changed because it was very dif difficult because our grandmother did get sick and unfortunately she passed away because of COVID. But also we're in radio, right? And we're supposed to be the, the, the thing that makes people happy, get them out of whatever they're going through. And so getting fed so much negativity and trying to stay positive. Meanwhile, we're dealing with our own stuff at home it was very challenging yes it was really right. challenging to continue to be that voice of enjoyment and positivity and meanwhile in at our home. own house 
you know, we're dealing with sadness and sickness and, and it wasn't easy. No. And then that's why we felt going back into the race. We needed to finish what we started. We had to do it for our family, for our grandmother. And we knew like, if there's a time to do it, now is the time. Yeah. You don't start something and then not finish it. And we also wanted to do it in representation to all those that lost loved ones because we understood we were right there with them. We understood what, what everybody, what the world really was going through. And so the way that we prepared was we knew that it involved a lot of cardio, a lot of running. So we brushed up on our running. We did a couple of weightlifting because our upper body uh, strength is terrible. <laughs> we memorized all the flags and the capitals. We learned how to say different things in different languages like hello, help, north, south, um, hurry. <laughs> uh, little words that you're going to need just to try and get by when in case you're in other countries. And that's basically it. We also had a different mindset. Like given everything that we had gone through in those 19 months, we're like, we're going to go back. We're going to run this race, but we're going to have fun. And we're not going to argue and make each other feel bad because I feel like we did that in the first three legs of the race and it didn't help us at all as you all saw so <laughs> we went into it let's just have fun mm -hmm. and enjoy this experience because lord knows a lot of people try out and don't make it and here we are blessed to to have this opportunity and I think you guys made your grandma proud and your family proud with the and your listeners proud throughout the race thank you Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> All right. So e during your time on the show, each of you performed four different roadblocks. So what was the most memorable roadblocks that you guys performed and why did they stand out to you? Okay. For me, uh, obviously it's the bungee jumping, something that I've always wanted to do. And I got to do it in Switzerland. And it's actually one of the highest bungee jumps in Europe. Mm -hmm. So for me to have done that is, um, you know, it's a, it's a memory right there. I also enjoyed the fact of uh, the bagpipes. I had to build the bagpipes, play a note with a full band. Like that's something I would have never thought I would do that. And for me to have done that, it's like, it's a fun memory for me. I have to say that for me, Lulu, um, I did most of the hiking roadblocks, <laughs> which is weird because Lala has a little bit more stamina than I do. So it would have made sense for Lala to have done that. But climbing uh, Mount St. in Switzerland was breathtaking. The views, you can see the country surrounding. And I did not think that I'd be able to climb that mountain so fast. Um, and just to experience that and, and take in the sights was just amazing. And then I think the other roadblock was doing the canyon, which was also <laughs> hiking. <laughs> that was pretty fun because, you know, we were hiking, but then you, you get to splash into water. The water was very clear, cold, um, but it was fun because I also got to zip line as well. So, so those like, are the two that really stood out for me. Yeah. It was more of the physical uh, roadblocks. I, I, was, I always ended up with like the more mental, using your brain type of time. Paying attention to detail. detail. Yeah. Believe me, I was, I'm a severe acrophobic, afraid of heights. <laughs> Uh, when you said zip line and you saw my eyes go up and my eyebrows go up when you mentioned a uh, bungee jumping off the tallest Europe in Europe, I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that must have been, but like, these are memories that you will take with you with the rest of your life. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Lifetime of, of memories and experiences. And we, we, we bonded. We have a new family now. It's the amazing race family of season 33. And, and so we're very protective of them. Like every time we see, I like mean, we, we were talking comment, to, to Kim and Penn earlier. We were talking to Dusty like five minutes ago and in a room in a town. We talked to everybody. Everyone. Yeah. So we're just very, very connected. Awesome. So what were some of the lessons that you guys learned from your time on the Amazing Race to help you grow as people? Yes. Yeah, so the main lesson, uh, and I think I could speak for the both of us, is do not doubt yourself. Um, we yeah. realized how much we doubt ourselves being on the race. Like, no we, reason. We second guess ourselves and there's no reason. Like we were just as capable as running the race as every any other team that was on it. I mean, we came in top five, not bad, ran, 11 out, ran eight out of the 11 legs. So it's something that we are constantly more aware of now. Like, why do we have that negative um, aspect? Like, why do we perception perception of ourselves? ourselves? Like, we're not going to be able to make it when we've made it thus far in our career. Um, I don't know why we do that. I also learned that 
we have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, we've always known we have, you know, we have anxiety. We just never knew how well we deal with it when we don't think about it. Because it was kind of like something we dealt with and I thought it was normal until I realized this oh, isn't normal. This is not normal. We need to fix this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think those two are the are the two main ones that stuck out to us. Yeah. And to have really to just enjoy life because you only have one life and you never know when it's your time. So just make the most of it. And don't even don't on bad grudges days. on the on the silly things. You know, it's It'll, you'll get over it. You'll move on. You'll find a solution. And that's that. Awesome. Now, for example, The Amazing Race is one of those shows that has an all-star season. So if they decide to revive the all-star season, would you two be excited to join? And they produce approach you. Would you guys say yes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt, we would definitely be at like, when, when do we leave? Yeah. That's how quickly. In fact, I haven't even unpacked my bag because I am ready to go at any minute. It was the best experience, and I highly recommend that if you're able to audition and you want to do it, do it. Don't even think about it. Do not. Because it's not even, it is about the million dollars, but it isn't because if you don't win, you still do because you gain a family of friends. And right? you traveled the world and you've learned you end up learning so much about yourself. So you end up winning no matter what. I know it sounds kind of like cliche, but it's true. I mean, of course we wanted the million dollars, but we never had it. So it's not like we lost a million dollars or that we owe a million dollars. Right. Totally. So speaking of competing, CBS it's has announced that's bring the ch MTV's a challenge to the network. And where it's alleged that alumni from Survivor, Big Brother, Love Island, and Amazing Race are all going to face off. So if producers contacted you guys, would you be interested about competing on the show? Would you guys do it? Or would you guys say, uh-uh? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would do it. If the, if the terms were right and if it wouldn't interfere with work, I would totally be down with it. Yeah, it seems like it's it's fun. It seems like it's definitely a challenging, maybe even harder than the Amazing Race. But we were told we totally be down for it, one hundred percent. Especially if we're able to see other familiar faces. Sure, why not? Awesome, awesome. So we gotta start winding down our conversation. So, what are your favorite social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and why do they stand out? Okay. Uh, for for me, it's Instagram. I just I'm always on Instagram. I love the fact that you can go through stories, you can see the posts. There's different ways of doing things now with reels so um people get so creative yeah. and instagram is our go-to we are we are we do have twitter and we do have facebook the facebook fan page but we're slowly trying to get into tiktok it's so hard to manage everything because oh, there's also youtube we do have but YouTube tiktok too. we know is the thing to be on right now uh all these videos even musicians are like you know um uh using their music for it so promoting their music on tiktok so we're slowly trying to get into it and understand it um, it's just a lot you know it's a lot and uh, we can't do it all and we try to answer everyone back but i think we do have a tiktok account i think there's only like three videos posted there yeah we're don't selected. ask me how i got it up there <laughs> i was just fidgeting with it but we're definitely trying to get on it and, and hopefully be this creative. this year i mean i know we're in march already but we'll We'll We're trying. Playing. We're trying. Yeah. We'll start playing with it. Awesome. I commend you guys for doing TikTok because I haven't had the time or the desire to do TikTok. Right? There's just so much. You have TikTok, uh, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube. Uh, YouTube. There's and, and everything I'm sure there's a lot more people. out there, but it's very time consuming and you can't spend your entire life on social media. You have to live life. So absolutely. And here's the thing. Stories are great, but memories are more price are more priceless. Yes, one hundred percent. That's that is well said. All right. So I my second to last question is: If you guys had the opportunity to meet with fans who want to audition to compete on the Amazing Race, what advice would you share with them? Definitely pick up your cardio because you will be doing a lot of running, and if you're slacking and you're trailing behind, it will cost you the million dollars so yeah definitely make sure that you you don't have to physically be like oh you know world's strongest person but you do have to have that cardio in you i would also recommend stick, study. Shift, stick shift driving you have to master because you just never know and finally know your flags know your countries you should know at least a little bit of each country i know there's a lot of them but 
if you're training for this and this is something you really want to do, you should at least know the capitals you know, and the flag. You should also know how to swim. And you should also know how to read a map. <laughs> oh, that's because you don't know if you're going to be self-driving. And so we... Oh, and also pack lightly. Very lightly. Because remember, anything you pack, it's what you have on your back and what you're running with. So if it's heavy, it's you're gonna, running with it. Exactly. So pack lightly, pick up your cardio, learn stick shift driving, know how to swim, and know how to read a map. I think that's the best advice. <laughs> yeah. Pretty on point. <laughs> All right, those, that's incredible in advice for those for those amazing race fans. So, last question: Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Where can my audience find you? Got listen to your show. Number one. Number two. Where, if they haven't watched your season, where can they watch it? And then also third and finally, how can they connect with you? Okay. okay. So, so, if you haven't seen the amazing race, you could stream it on right now at Paramount Plus. Uh, it's there. It's available. And, yes. And uh, if you, you know, want to listen to us on the radio, download the iHeartRadio app onto your smartphone. Look for 103.5 KTU and take us on the go wherever, wherever you go. go. You can also go to KTU.com and stream us in from there as well. And then you can follow us on our social platforms at Lulu Ilala. That's L-U-L-U-Y-L-A-L-A -L -A -L -A, across the board. Twitter, Twitter Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube. We also have a website, luluilala.com, and everything's up there. Awesome. So, guys, if you have missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob L.A. Share podcast, visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and Spreaker. Just type in Jake's Take with Jacob L.A. Share, J-A-K-E-S-T-A-K-E-T-A-K-E, -E -E, with Jacob L.A. Share, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Jacob Elishar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, just to let you know, ladies, that jakesashake.com, the blog that started all, is celebrating its 11th year this August. Yes, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Scott. And, they, and guys, the, you can find more articles and interviews with alumni from Survivor, Big Brother, America's Got Talent. And you can also check out my interviews with stars from American America's Got Talent, Big Brother, The Challenge, Survivor, all those shows. And also my music reviews are on the platform, jakesnashtake.com. Now, if you are financially able to, please consider heading to PayPal to help keep jakesnashtake.com, my platform, up and running. I'm the guy that does all the editing, books all the guests, writes all the questions. And I would appreciate your help. I, if you're unable to, I totally understand. But please su su consider subscribing to social media and please all and also downloading the podcast. Lulu, Lala, thank you so much for taking time on your schedule to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Let's do it again sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank Let you so much know. for having us. In. And okay. congratulations on all your success. Yes. 11 years, 500,000 downloads. Good for you. Thank you very much. And guys, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for listening to this. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>